My name's William Price. Okay, Mr. Price. Hey, we just want me to ask you a couple of questions. Okay. Okay, first, um, we would like to know a little about the origin of the... The origin of it, yes. okay. Uh, well, like I said, my father, he made it up until 1958. Mm -hmm. And I always remember, you know, working in the, in the sorghum cane fields. Or we call it sugar cane fields, but it's not sugar cane, it's sorghum cane. Mm -hmm. And uh, he planted not just a little bit, but acres of it. Best of my memories, you know, he he planted a large quantity because he he made it to you know for the family to eat on, you know, to survive on really in the early days. And uh, like I said, I don't know what time he started because his daddy actually made it. My grandfather made it, and from what I understand, he had his meal, the grinder meal, on a cart on cartwheels mm -hmm. where it could move, be moved, you know, from one place to the other. And he would go take the cart. To wherever the farmer had the cane planted, and would actually, you know, he had another. The pan itself could be moved, you know, the cooker pan, and he would set set it up right there at the person's house and make their molasses. You know, they wouldn't have to bring the cane to him, but uh, a lot of people would bring it to him. You know, would just cut it in their fields and then bring it to him to uh, rent it out and to make it. So, like I said, it's been in my family all of my life. I remember okay, so you know, it being your, made. It was your great grandfather's idea. Well, uh, he started, I think. Okay. Yeah, he started making it. Now, now, I don't know whether I don't think they made it when they lived here at their original home place. I don't think they probably did because he was uh, he hadn't got into that yet. I don't think. Okay. He was just a young man, you know, basically when they left here. So, what what made him choose um, molasses? Uh, I guess just at that time, that's what they they ate a lot of it, you know, for meals and their, with their meals, and mm -hmm. they depended on it, you know, at that time for. Just to eat, you know, for the family to eat. Okay. Yeah, I think a lot of times they use it like for their sweetener. Yeah, they okay. use it for sweetening and cook with it. You know, they cook their, their cakes and stuff like that with it. They put it in their cakes. And, of course, molasses cookies too, you know, basically. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, they had used, used it quite a bit, you know, in for the family. Okay. You know. So when did you start making it a presentation with Lucy the Mule? Um, it was night a year before last, I think. A year before last, when she come. Oh. Of course, at the time, I didn't know she was making a video. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was just taking some pictures, mm -hmm. and then I found out later that you know it was on a video, and I think they done she done real well. She did. You know, as far as putting the uh, molasses creek the the, uh, the band with it, mm -hmm. I thought that was kind of ironic and you know, pretty neat the way she done that, and I think they done a good job. Okay. You know, and. How popular is it? Does it? I know you uh, do a presentation um, with children come out and, mm -hmm. and look. Oh yeah, well, my brother Melvin uh, Price from Jamesville, mm -hmm. he's been in it with me too to, to help me along with it. You know, for the last few years, and he a lot of time would bring out uh, his grandchildren and different ones that they knew would come. And um, in fact, I think one of his daughters brought some uh, school age kids out one day and had some pictures taken, and uh, they all seemed to really enjoy it. Especially, he's got one grandchild that, that really got into it. Uh, that really helped a lot, you know, as far as stripping the leaves, mm -hmm. cutting it down and everything. You know, because there is quite a work, bit of work to it. There's, uh, I mean, it's nothing that that don't require any any labor. There's a lot of labor involved into it, you know, as far as it, getting it prepared. Mm -hmm. Getting it prepared to uh, process. Well, how long, how long does it usually take? How long does it well, the first year I planted it, I planted it too early, mm -hmm. and when it come out, you know, time to squeeze it, it was real hot. You know, you don't want to plant it when it's a kind of a hot time of the year. And uh, and I learned to plant it later in the season to give it you know, time to come out, you know, in a cool time of, of the fall. Because I remember Daddy always, he had his work would come out in the fall, in a cooler time of the, of the season. But... Uh, like I said, it was just too hot that time, and mm -hmm. and when you got a fire cooking juice and stuff, it just makes it that much hotter, mm -hmm. you know. But but this, I planted it around uh, first part of July, best of my remembers, last year, mm -hmm. and it come out uh, in the cool part of the fall. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what time we actually started making it, but uh, it was a lot cooler time, and everybody seemed to enjoy that better <laughs> than okay. than being real hot. Now, do you profit off of the molasses? Do you, do you have a certain? Well, uh, I don't really plan it to make a make a lot of money on it or nothing, you know. But because I I do sell some from time to time. But mm -hmm. uh, my son he has sold some at Overton's. He works at Overton in Greenville, 
and Jesse has sold some from time to time, but it's, as far as a money making project, you know, it hadn't been that. Okay. It's basically just to give away. Mm -hmm. oh, just okay. to give away from time to time different ones. Okay. Now, how, uh, is, it, is it a, something popular that you do? That people, people come out on um, well, maybe a Saturday uh, or Sunday when you're doing it and just to watch I would, do I it. I thought it would turn out to that, but it seemed like it hasn't turned out that way. You know, and, and people, they say that they want to see it made, but when it comes time to, to make it or something, you don't see them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what made you t decide to continue on, on making Well, uh, I just had a, a desire, it seemed like, to just get more involved with it. Me and Melvin, my brother, were talking about it. And uh, the, the meals themselves are, are pretty rare. You know, you try to get get this in this area, but I happened to look on Craigslist. That's what my wife used to say. I like to watch Craigslist. <laughs> but uh, I looked on Craigslist, and there was a, a man that had some in Valdosta, Georgia, mm -hmm. of all places. So we decided to make a kind of a weekend trip down there, and uh, that's to my remembrance. So I went to, and rode all the way through, drove all the way through to meet the guy the next day. You know, and it's just quite. A, Quite an ordeal getting there, mm -hmm. <laughs> no. But once I met the guy, uh, I ended up getting one that he had taken apart, and it made it easier to transport that way because they're very heavy, mm -hmm. you know, they're very heavy machines or pieces of equipment. And uh, he guaranteed and promised me that all the pieces were there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, I figured it'd be best to get one already taken apart. That way I can handle it, put it in the yeah. truck, taking it out of the truck, and everything real e easier. But he had some that was all together, but. I went ahead and got the one you're taking apart. Okay. It, was, it was a two uh, two cylinder grinder. My daddy he had one that had three cylinders in it, three drums mm -hmm. that, that crushed the the uh, cane. But uh, I ended up getting the two cylinder, and uh, it worked real well. I put it up, built me a stand, and I mounted it. Well, we'll go out there and see that in a few minutes. Okay. Okay. Now, how old is Lucy? Oh. <laughs> that might be a question you need to ask my brother. <laughs> I know she's an old mule. <laughs> How long have you been using uh, Lucy? We uh, used her two years, I think. Two, two years. years? Yeah. Okay. And, what's and there was times where Melvin, my brother, couldn't maybe help me, and I'd, I'd put my grandson on the lawnmower. So I found out that you could use a, a riding lawnmower, you know, okay. easy. And I've known, known some people to do the, like a small tractor. Mm -hmm. And I think one time they made it at... Uh, at the state fair, using a cub, cub tractor, okay. from a small form of. Mm -hmm. it, the, the main thing is just go round and round with the, mm -hmm. with the pole, you know, that, that grinds the cane. Okay. Now we see in the video how Lucy mm -hmm. goes round and round. Mm -hmm. How long does it take to actually get that process started going and then to the end and where you, as we see you, you know. Well, you can get some uh, supply juice ground up first is the best way. Mm -hmm. I found out that if you don't have a good supply of juice, you may be in, pro in a trouble, mm -hmm. in pro uh, trouble there, because the fire once it gets heated up, it's going to keep heat, and you need to keep you need to cut the juice down while you've got the heat. Okay. But if you've got to wait, <coughs> wait for the juice, you know you you need juice to keep putting to it there as it evaporates. As it evaporates, it needs more juice. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you don't have the juice, you you might end up scorching it or burning it. You know, burning. It. Okay. Because yeah, it it takes about all day. With the process, you it's know, as far as process. grinding it and uh, and cooking it out too. Yeah. Because before yeah. before he even does that, he has to strip the leaves off of it and cut it. Yeah. Cut it off. Mm -hmm. You know, cut it down. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, put, piles it up. Piles it up. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what he uses to squeeze it. You know, that way he gets it ready to squeeze. Okay. That's where it's labor intensive at yeah. and involved because you know you have to, like she said, strip the, the leaves off the stalks and. Uh, and then cut it down, and, and I normally just make it in, put it in piles, and take my bush axe and cut the heads off. Mm -hmm. And uh, these heads are, it's something similar to, if you're familiar with milo, it's a milo, it's a small plant that's grown mainly for cattle feed. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's similar to that, except the milo is short and used for feed, you know, for livestock, but sorghum is higher okay. and got the sweet juice. I have never tasted juice on sorghum. I, I, don't, I mean, yeah, Milo. I don't, they might be bitter. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Okay. Um, do you think about making, maybe making a business out of it in the future? I, I doubt very seriously. It's just something you do. For yeah, just something I've kind of done. How about the presentation? Is that is that something that you want to start to um, to become popular? 
Well, I maybe. don't know. And, uh, I have kind of talked about not even raising any this year, Katie. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I haven't really made my mind up yet whether to plant anymore or not. Okay. But one thing I have taken up most of my, my farmland for pasture for mm -hmm. my horse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And where I planted it out, I've got to plant it right back over the same spot. Right. And I don't think it's too good good a practice to plant over just, you know, where you've had it before. Mm -hmm. I may not make it this year and make it the next year. I don't know, but right now. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, uh, very few people do it, but, but there are some people that do. Okay. You know, I don't know of anybody that does it in Martin County other than, than what I had done. Okay. And my daddy, he, he was the only one for a long time that did it in Martin County. But like I said, early, in the early days, people done it just about, from what I understand, everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it was pretty, pretty common. You okay. know, for somebody to make molasses. You remember when Mr. Brown? Because he got, we got our seed from Mr. Brown. He lives right yeah. off the Stokes Road, going like between Stokes and Greenville. Mm -hmm. Was a little, you know, cut through there. Yeah. And we happened to see some uh, sugar cane. Or sugar cane he had, he, he had planted. And that was uh, Russell Brown. That's why I'm saying Mr. Brown. Yeah, Mr. Brown, yeah. Russell Brown, and, uh, and between that's Stokes how really, and Greenville. Because Mr. Brown gave him some seed. And that, and then up to our right. first year, our first year we used his seed. Yeah. And then the second year we used Mr. Legas because he he ordered his off. This man is in his nineties. Ninety three. And he ordered it off the internet. It's, I mean, it's it's a sweet tasting molasses. Yeah. Okay. Now she normally don't have the taste for molasses. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, but I like that. That was sweet. But she liked that. Mm -hmm. You know, because it was sweeter and doesn't have a. I remember Daddy, he made his, and it had, kind of had a little aftertaste. Mm -hmm. kind of little, you know, you knew you'd taste it when you taste it. But okay. she said this don't have that. We don't have that bitter aftertaste at all. Okay. But I did find out that when you cook molasses, if you, uh, you got, I've got a copper pan that I cook it in. Mm -hmm. And my brother said it could be coming from that copper pan, but that first batch is real bitter. Normally it's real bitter. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, it was just, you could, I couldn't even use it. So what I had to end up doing with that, I made rust remover out of that. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> rust remover. Rust okay. remover. Okay. Yeah. And it made some of the best rust remover you've ever seen. And <laughs> but you take like one part of molasses and uh, ten parts water, make a mixture, and uh, it will take rust off of stuff. I didn't know it. I saw that on the internet and uh, decided I'd try it, mm -hmm. it and works. it does work. Yeah. I have taken off heavy rust off of <laughs> stuff. And you just let it sit for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And it does it. Oh, wow. hmm. But I've got a big barrel out there now that I got. I call it a rust barrel. The day before, it's got two. If you come on this side, you'll see the uh, the wheels. It's got two wheels here that grind the, the syrup or to grind the cane. Mm -hmm. In other words, the cane is fed in from this side over here. Yeah. And it comes out on that side. So if you notice the, the date up here is patented 1905 and 1906. So this is old. This is really neat. <laughs> and I, I don't think it's going anywhere. <laughs> what I've got sitting on it. Do you plan on keeping it in the family? I hope so. Yeah, as far as I know, I hope it to stay right here. Like I said, the juice comes out through this piece of copper. <laughs> Or a tub, juice like that. And normally I have a bucket in there with a sack, piece of sack or something mm -hmm. over it to catch the stuff coming in there. And that way I can kind of, if it's any run over, it runs into the tub. Oh, okay. The juice. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now this, this kind of juice. I do what thing after it's mashed. Okay. But it grows, it grows tall. It's, oh, I had it out there this year. It was way over my head, probably two or three feet over my head. Oh. And that, I had that whole fecal planted. Okay. But this right here is my preheating tank. And like I said before, I got it off Craigslist. And I found out I didn't need, because it was really, this is half of what it was originally. Mm -hmm. I cut half of it off. I found out, you know, so me and Chris, my grandson, we ground about all day and didn't even fill it up. We filled it right along there, maybe. Mm. So we didn't, I didn't need it all the way up there. Mm -hmm. 
And because of that, too, I had steps over here where I had to step up and reach up and pour the juice mm -hmm. in there, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was before I built the shed. I built this, just finished this last, last year. year. Last year. And this, these posts here come off the, uh, the old original stable over the home place. I want to try to save and put these to some use. But they come off the original uh, stables over the home place on Price Road. And uh, like I said, I built this around it and then close the back to the uh, Franklin stove and then put all that piping in there. And uh, this is my copper pan. And once I preheat it in here, mm -hmm. that kind of gets some of the, the moisture out, you know. The, the secret is just getting all the water out of, out of the juice. Because once you get the juice the, you, with no water, that's what ends up with the syrup. That's your syrup there, you know, without the water. But this cooks here, the final cooking, more or less, I guess you'd say. <clears throat> of course, naturally, I mean, it's clean, you know, when I cook it. <laughs> right now, it's got bugs and flies and everything else in it. And I left a little bit of the molasses in there to try to keep it. Uh, let's see. Oops, here we go. Here's my, here's my little paddle thing. One of them that I used it, you know, once it gets to heating. Mm -hmm. I can take this paddle and just go like from one tray to the next and go right on down because I, I mean it really gets hot and it's normally real steaming. Of course mm -hmm. you saw that in the video. Yeah. Steaming and everything but then when it gets ready. Now, somebody said well how do you know it's ready? <laughs> well really it's kind of a fine art. A little thin line between ready and not ready. Because you can cook it too much and it, it, it solidifies and, you know, gets too stiff, you know, where you can't eat it, you know, and all. And then if you don't cook it enough, it won't keep. Because mm. you got the molasses normally would keep without being refrigerated. Okay. You know, okay. It, it would keep itself just right on the table. Mm. But it's told about my daddy. I heard a story that he could make uh, winter molasses in summer. I said, what do you mean by that? I said, well, summer, you know, that was kind of, would run, he cooked that, not as much, maybe. Mm -hmm. And the winter, he would cook it, no, the winter, he would cook it more, summer, he would cook it less, you know, for different types of, of use. But it was still keeping the time on the table. You know, was molasses at home, always stayed on the table. <laughs> and my mama, she, she didn't like daddy's molasses, so she ate the, uh, Grandma's. <laughs> <laughs> there were two types of molasses on the table at home. You know, it was either the grand, or my daddy's molasses or mm. grandma's. <laughs> 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 <laughs>